On the first day of Christmas, the librarians gave to me Ezekiel's backstory. Hi everybody, what's up? It's Julie the Bibliophile. I know it's literally been a week since the episodes premiered, and as you're watching this, there may be an episode 5 and 6 in existence already, um, but I was really, really busy, and I had no time or energy whatsoever to film the episode reviews. I really, really wanted to all week, and then things happened, because it was Christmas, and I'm wearing my new Leverage shirt that I got for Christmas, and I'm really, really excited about it, but because I don't have a lot of time right now, I'm going to go ahead and move on and start talking about Season 4, Episode 3, and The Christmas Thief. And this episode also premiered with Season 4, Episode 4, and The Silver Screen, but I decided I wanted to do separate videos for the two reviews, um, so that's what I'm going to do. So, I love The Christmas Thief. In terms of Christmas episodes, um, I like Santa's Midnight Run a little bit better, but I loved The Christmas Thief. What I loved the most about it, I think, is that um, how much we were seeing the librarians as a family. There was no drama, there was no angst whatsoever. We were kind of just seeing them all in like casual life in the annex, and that's something that I've wanted for a really, really long time. And so I'm really happy that we finally got that. They're just a family, they're just hanging out, it's Christmas, and we're doing it! Um, but, like, there was so much that was great about this episode. There's so much to talk about. The character development that was evident for all the characters, like, from past episodes, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about Ezekiel Jones and his backstory and his relationship with his mother. I want to talk about, I mean, the last scene. I, I just, I, wow. Wow. Okay. So, I am um, like I said, one of my favorite things about this episode was the evidence of the character development. We have in season 2, Eve is wanting to go on a vacation really bad, but Flynn's like, "We can't really go on vacation yet cuz the world is ending." And now we get to season 4 and even Flynn are going on a vacation. And then of course, you have Flynn who in season 1 and season 2 kind of like wanted nothing to do with the lit. Season 1, he just wanted to work alone. Season 2, he, you know, by the end of season one start of season two he wants nothing but eve he doesn't want to be alone he wants to be with eve but he's still having trouble adjusting to the idea of the lits being there all the time even though he's really really happy that he has them even though he does love them um and season three saw him adjusting to being with these people even though he loves them and considers them family and would die for them he had trouble adjusting to them being there and figuring out what that meant for him. And now, by season four, he's just leaving his vacation with Eve to want to be with them on Christmas, and it makes me so happy. And I'm so proud of Flynn, and I love where we're getting to see Flynn go this season. Between the first two episodes and now the second two episodes, Flynn is doing amazing, and I love it. And then, of course, there's Eve. So we have the character development in Eve, where she hated Christmas in season one because Christmas was her birthday, and she was a soldier who never felt like she belonged anywhere. And she spent so much time on the battlefield, she saw so many horrible things happening during Christmas that she hated Christmas, and she didn't want to acknowledge her birthday, she didn't want to acknowledge Christmas, she didn't want to put up decorations, and we kind of see that change at the end of Santa's Midnight Run. That's kind of the first melting away that we see of Eve in the series. Um, when she's celebrating her birthday with the Litz. But now, we get to the end of Christmas Thief, and Eve is suggesting putting up decorations in the library! There's also the matter of Jake and Cassandra, who were fighting in Season 3 over should we use magic or not. It caused a big rift between them. They weren't really hanging out much in Season 3. Now, um, Jake is suggesting to Cassie that they use magic, and smiling at each other about it, and using magic together, and God! And Ezekiel, that's just, this whole video is gonna be about Ezekiel. Um, Jake and Cassandra were acting very married throughout the whole episode, I adored it. Um, when Cassandra gave Jake his sweater, he was just smiling at her, even though he hated it, and, like, Ezekiel, right from the get-go, was like, what is this? But Jake was smiling at her when she gave it to him, that made me so happy. Seen under the table with the magic, like I said, when she was refusing to let him drive the sleigh, he's trying to help her out of the sleigh. It was very flirty, very married, very classic season one, season two, Jasandra. That made me really, really happy to see. The sweaters alone was just so cute, because I love Cassie, and I love the sweaters. I still have yet to rewatch this episode, but I feel like I need to because, like, 
it's so dorky and everything about it is so classic librarians. The way Cassandra behaves in it is so classic Cassandra. We have Cassandra decorating the annex, giving homemade sweaters to everybody in the annex. Uh, I love the idea that like they're, they're all so excited about the sleigh. So we're kind of seeing the little kid side of all the librarians again. That wonder at the magic. And that kind of went away in season three. I really love that we're getting that back in season four. Um, they were excited about the sleigh. And I love that like the continuation of this metaphor of Eve and Flynn being the parents of the group. As soon as Eve and Flynn leave for vacation, they're like, yeah, we're going to be quiet. And then they, they leave and they're like, let's get this party started. And it was like teenagers in high school throwing a party as soon as their parents leave. I love it. When Eve was on vacation with Flynn, we had that line of like, bye kids. And I just, it was, oh God, everything about it was just, I'm just listing off stuff that I loved right now. Um, I am kind of trying to speed through these reviews a little bit because I don't have a lot of time and I want to get them up. So basically that's the general idea. So plot summary of the episode, <laughs> right? Because I guess I should mention that. Um, Eve and Flynn and Jenkins are going off on vacation with Santa for the holiday and the Lits are left behind to watch Santa slay. And when they watch Santa slay, Ezekiel visits home to visit his mother um, for Thanksgiving Day. And he goes to spend the holiday with his, family's br with his family briefly, um, which is they're celebrating Thanksgiving Day, which is a thieves Christmas. And that's when you steal gifts and give gifts to each other that you stole and create a, sh a shrine to the patron saint of thieves. It's really like a demented version of Christmas, a thieves version of Christmas, like in every way. I thought it was really cool, really creative. But I also love the fact that Ezekiel is going to visit his family. You know, we didn't really get much of a glimpse into what the librarians' outside lives are like, or we never really do get a glimpse. Like, how much contact do they have with their family? We know that Cassandra and Jake are, like, completely estranged from their family, and we also know, like, what their families were like growing up. Because we know that both of them were kind of abused as children, and now that's it. It's over finito. We know Jake had a little bit more of a relationship with his family than Cassie, that Cassie was kind of estranged from her family for we don't know how long, but she hasn't spoken to her parents in a long time. But Jake, you know, was still working in the family business, was still working at home, still loves his family, um, and is still in contact with them in season one, was still thinking about going home with them for Christmas. Um, until we get to season two, episode three, and we do see that Jake's father was abusive, and we can kind of assume from that point that Jake makes the clean break from his family after And What Lies Beneath the Stones. But, but we really know nothing about anybody else's family. Um, we had, like, one little hint to Eve's family in the first episode, just a hint that maybe she doesn't speak to them that much. Um, but we don't know anything about Eve's backstory or family. We just know that her parents named her Eve because she was born on Christmas Eve. Um, we don't know what the relationship is with Eve's family. Um, I'm gonna talk about that more in Silver Screen. But we know Flynn had a really loving relationship with his mother, but that his father died when he was a little boy, and now we know that Flynn is alone. Also estranged because his mother died and he really didn't have contact with anybody else. So, like... While we had little hints at everybody else's family, the only ones that we knew definitively were Jake, Cassandra, and Flynn. And we don't know anything about anybody else's family, and this now we're finding out about Ezekiel's family, and I love it. I love that Ezekiel has a good relationship with his family. It was a complicated relationship, but it was a good relationship, and a good enough relationship that he was going back to visit them without prompting. And I'm going to get into Ezekiel's relationship di um, dynamic with his family, but I really love, I think it's really important to show that at least one of them has a good relationship standing with their family, because one of the most tragic, but one of the most beautiful things about this show is that, you know, they all have these really tragic pasts, like more tragic than I can comprehend most of the time, especially Jake and Cassandra. And now they've all found family with each other in the library, but I don't know, it's nice to me to know that at least one of them was loved as a child. Because, like, I mean, I know Flynn was, but there were other factors going on there. I just like that Ezekiel has living family members that love him. And I think it shows a lot about his character. So, Ezekiel goes to visit his family, and he, his mother is kind of making fun of him, and his sisters are making fun of him, and he lets it slip that he saved the world. And that he's in the magical library, and they don't believe him, so Ezekiel, being the stupid young kid that Ezekiel is, brings his mother to the library through the back door, and before he can stop it, she steals the back door and starts stealing Christmas from around the world. So now it's up to Jake and Cassandra and Ezekiel to, um, 
to steal back the door, but then also they find out Ezekiel's mother stole a painting from, like, the most dangerous man in the world who leads the Bank of Thieves, and they have to go get that- they have to go get that painting back, they fly there on Santa's sleigh, it's just a load of goofy fun. I'm not going to go much in too much into plot detail now because I did that last time and it just the video got too long. Speaking about Ezekiel, um I spoke about I, how I love that he has this good relationship with his family. I think it's really important to show complicated families. I love on TV shows that show complicated families. I'm a big fan of Gilmore Girls. Um um, I love shows that show even when the relationship between a parent and a child is not perfect, that a lot of times there's still that, there's still that love there, that base, unconditional love. And that's something that Ezekiel has. And I think that's an important juxtaposition to show, um, like with Jake and Cassandra, who, Jake, when he meets his father, he knows that his father is Hokonote and not his father because he said his father would die before he told him he loved him. Um, and so I think it's important to make the distinction between a complicated family relationship that Ezekiel has and abuse, which Jake and Cassandra went through. So I love that we have, we have all different kinds of family situations going on here. We have Flynn, who was kind of just isolated, just living with his mother. Flynn, who's alone because his family died. Um, Jake and Cassandra, who are left alone because they were abused, because they really have no family that treats them well. We have Ezekiel, who ha- Baird, we don't know. But Ezekiel, we have a complicated family relationship. And that's such an important thing, because that's something that so many people deal with in life. Um, so to see happiness and love coming out of that complicated family relationship is really beautiful, and I'm really glad that this show touched upon it. We get to hear Ezekiel's backstory, which is that everything he stole, he gave to other people less fortunate. Um, basically, he's Robin Hood. I wasn't sure how I felt about this backstory, because we do see, even in this season, Ezekiel talking about wanting gold and, like, loving his money and being all about himself. But my friends also pointed out to me that, like, Ezekiel has always been a very secretive person, um, so we really wouldn't know if he gave it away, and there's always been that affection and that want to protect, um, in Ezekiel, you know, whenever Flynn leaves, Ezekiel's always very, very adamant about protecting Eve and being upset for Eve, um, and so that little bit of good in Ezekiel was kind of always showing, and now we get that backstory that he gave it all away, he was like Robin Hood, um, that would also make sense, like, why in season three he doesn't want to give the gold that he got to a museum. Why maybe he's mad that the library has all these artifacts, because he wants less fortunate people to make money off of it. I just loved it. I was watching it with all my friends, and we were all screaming about Ezekiel. We were all just, like, screeching, lying on the floor, screeching about Ezekiel. And it was just so great. Um, I love the scene. I love the scene with Ezekiel and his mother. Um, where he tells her that, she, like, she taught him love. And they kind of learn something from each other. That's, again, going off that complicated family dynamic. They learn something from each other in that scene. Where Ezekiel's mother is like, you know, I learned from you that I can give now, and now I want to keep giving, and I feel ashamed that I only taught you greed. And Ezekiel basically explains to his mother, like, you know, like, I am the way I am because of you. Because you took in four kids off the street, and you made this family. You gave us a family. Um, that, again, is a unique relationship dynamic where Ezekiel has three adopted sisters, and he's also adopted. We learn that Ezekiel, we kind of get the impression that Ezekiel did have a loving family, even though, like, we get that they're making fun of him and stuff, and it's complicated that Ezekiel did feel up growing love despite being poor, which he talks about in season three. So I do love that. I think it was very touching to see that moment between Ezekiel and his mother, and to hear the exchange of I love yous, because, again... We have, like, Jake, who has said that his father has never told him he loved him, and he doesn't even trust any of his family. Cassandra, who doesn't talk to her parents at all. Flynn, whose mother is dead. And then we get to see Ezekiel have his tender moment with, her, with his mother, and him saying, I love you, Mom. And, like, I just, it was so perfect for a Christmas episode. It was so touching. I loved seeing Ezekiel have that bit of happiness, um, and I just think they did a great job with the writing of it. Then we get to the last scene of Christmas Eve, which I almost forgot I need to talk about, which made me so emotional. I'm gonna move back. We have Flynn and Eve get back from vacation, 
And they say, like, you know, it was a bad decision to go on vacation because they thought they needed to relax. But at the end of the day, nothing beats being with family. And that line made me so emotional because I love it. Um, that's what The Librarians is all about. Take away all the magic, take away all the action and adventure, and what you have left is this story about, you know, six people coming together and finding a family when they never really had a family before. Finding a family with each other, finding out that they can be loved, and it's such a beautiful dynamic, and I loved seeing it acknowledged in that episode. We had an acknowledgement of it a lot in season three. We're hearing a lot of talk about family in season four. Um, and just to hear nothing beats being with family, it was such a tender moment. I got emotional because Cassandra looked right at Jake at that moment. Ezekiel says nothing beats being with family and Cassandra's eyes go to Jake and I'm like, whoo, okay, okay, whoo, 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 whoo. The feelings! I just could then, and then Ezekiel, the episode ends with Ezekiel kind of looking at the library and nodding. And my best friend suggested at that moment that every one of them is going to have that moment with the library this season. And I think she, they're right, um, because I think, like, with this season being about, um, figuring out whether or not we can trust the library, I think it's really, really cool that, like, if each one of them has that moment of remembering why they came to the library in the first place, remembering why they love it, and we see that in Ezekiel's eyes, um, when he looks at the library, and I just think it's such a great moment. And with what the show means to me, and with what I went through this summer and this fall, feeling like I was losing it, um, what I'm still coming out of some days, it's like, it's really, it's really happy for me to see that on the screen. Um, and the show means so much to so many people. Um, and I think the library is kind of, has become like a symbolic representation of what this show means to people because it's the librarian so obviously for me it's the library like this is the library this is home this is what showed me home and that's what we're getting from ezekiel in the scene and what we'll hopefully get from every other character and that's just so touching because that's i think that's what happens for so many people that to me that's what it is when i turn on and watch an episode of the librarians that's what that feeling is when i look at the library i just get that feeling of this is like this is this is it. This is home. This is why I love this show. And I really just, like, love seeing that on screen from the characters, too. It's just a really touching thing. It's a really important thing to me. Um, and so I loved it. Okay, so other moments I love, like, Flint, talking about Flynn getting drunk on eggnog, Cassandra and the Christmas sweaters, um... You know, I loved Cassandra being the ghost of Christmas future because I plotted out a Christmas Carol AU last year and I had Cassandra as the ghost of Christmas future in that episode. And it was in that, not episode, in that thick that I plotted out but never wrote. I kind of just wrote a summary of how the characters would fit into a Christmas Carol because it fits really, really well. I had Cassandra as the ghost of Christmas future. And like, this is like the 10th time in season four that something that I wrote for a fan fiction is coming true and I really want to know what's going on. I'm gonna do a video about that someday but right now I'm focusing on episode reviews. So that's it for End the Christmas Thief. Please remember to like and subscribe if you like this video. You can follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. All the links are in the description. A link at the end of the video will be provided to watch my review of season four episode four and the silver screen if you want to keep going forward and watch me talk about the fourth episode because i think these episodes were so great that they each deserve their own video to talk about um so until then i love you my lids stay magical and i'll see you next week bye <laughs>